Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Get Understanding Podcast. I'm your host, Kainisa Martin, and this episode is entitled Maximum Security. Now, this episode isn't going to be, it isn't going to be long. Um, If some of you may have seen the flyers that's been posted on social media, On October the 5th, um, I will be having a book study on the book, God Celestial Network. I've spoken about it previously on this platform. And because it's changed my life and changed, is systematically changing my mind and how I'm able to view and see things and perceive things. Um... I believe it's only right that I share what the Lord's given me um, because it's not for me alone, but it's for all who will be able to receive it. So on October the 5th, um, it'll be virtual. And so if you're interested in joining virtually, you can email me at get understanding LLC followed by the number seven at gmail.com that's get understanding llc followed by the number seven at gmail.com so that option is for if you want to join remotely and i'll send you the the link once you send me an email but if you would like to join in person the um, actual address for the location is on the flyer as well. So you can just locate that flyer on um, the social media platform, which is the Get Understanding podcast. So the whole reason for one, the title of the episode, it coincides with what's bring, what's being presented in this book, which I mean, what's being presented in the gospel as well. but. I find that the fallen nature is by nature fantasy stricken and we carry over fantasy into salvation until the truth who is Jesus Christ shows us where we are living in fantasy as opposed to reality and what Satan does through you know every avenue he has access to through mediums like social media television um radio anything that he can get his hands on in regards to audio and visual he uses it to program our minds to teach us and programming is just pretty much teaching giving instruction so the devil uses these mediums to program us to see things in a certain way um and he's very specific on how he wants us to view things how he wants us to view god how he wants us to view what's right and wrong how he wants us to view freedom um and sin we have a skewed perception or understanding of what real freedom really is so we believe that freedom is you know just limited to financial stability and that that is not the the root of freedom only god can truly bring freedom and until we have that revelation of jesus christ in us we don't even really know what freedom is we don't have the ability to exercise freedom because the Holy Spirit isn't in play. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And liberty means freedom. 
So whether we're conscious of it or not, the devil has placed our minds, our soul, our spirit under maximum security. And this means that he suppresses us in every way, shape, form, or fashion to ensure that, one, we never come to know Jesus Christ personally, and two, in the event that we are born again and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we do not have the ability uh, because of blindness, because of fantasy, because of deceptions, that we don't have the ability to exercise that liberty that comes with salvation. By nature, salvation brings liberation. But that maximum security, that confinement, that restraint is in the mind. We, Whether we realize it or not, how we think affects every single thing we do, what we believe is possible and impossible what we see um, ourselves to be capable of doing and even what we believe God is capable of doing and when we just look at things from a, a practical standpoint from the standpoint of um, weighing what we truly believe by what we're doing and what we're not doing we can honestly take a hard look at ourselves and acknowledge what do we really believe the Bible says they were called to the obedience of faith. So that means that whatever I, whatever I believe, there's an obedience that comes with that belief. It's proof of belief. Now, um, now the example that I always use with individuals when it comes to obedience, being called to the obedience of faith. Um, other day I was speaking with a, a woman and her husband. You know, everyone always wants to say they believe in God and so on and so forth. But I use the example, you know, if a man walks through that threshold, walks through that door and says, drop your phone or I'll shoot you. If I believe that he will shoot me if I don't drop this phone, I'm going to drop it. So therefore, there is a obedience to the command that he gave because I believe what he said. Now, in that same circumstance, if he said the same thing and I did not believe um, that he would shoot me if I dropped the, if I didn't drop the phone, I would hold the phone in my hand because I did not believe what he said. Now, the key point in this scenario is that regardless of if I believe that there is a bullet in that gun. There will be, there's going to be a bullet in that gun and, and the possibility of being shot will still be in play. Now, if I obey what the man said, then I would drop my phone. And that shows that, okay, I actually believe that what, what he just said is true. That I'll be shot if I don't do what he said to do. If I didn't believe him, I would keep the phone in my hand and be shot. Because there's a bullet in the gun. Now... Again, your belief or disbelief does not negate the fact that there is a bullet in that gun. Now, your belief or disbelief will only change what will happen based off of um, a command that was given. And it's the same thing in the gospel. We can, God can give a command and if we believe it, we will obey it. The command still stands. The command is absolute. The command does not change. But... Our obedience, our lack of obedience will literally, you know, change our lives. It will have a direct impact on our lives based off of what we're doing and what we're not doing. So we need to take a hard look at, you know, one, where we are right now in salvation. If this is if you're saved, if you're not saved, looking at just a, a lot, your life. And this book is not singly focused on, oh, you have to be saved. You have to have been born again. You have to have been in the, grown up in a church to understand this book for it to be, for it to make sense to you. It's, it's literally designed for a person who sincerely wants God, who sincerely wants to obey God. And he does it through the word of God, but the book obviously has scriptures in it. And 
the book is telling you, showing you in plainness of speech, making it plainer for this generation using um, technical terminology. Because, I mean, let's be honest, everyone knows about phones, how to use phones, how to use devices and the Wi-Fi networks. We know how these things work because our our generation has grown up alongside technology and it's embedded in our you know our day-to-day -day lives so it's easy to use technology or technical terms to explain what god is saying because we're able to build a foundation now if any of you are in the education field or even if you, you ever trained anyone um, you know and understand that in order to bring understanding of a new topic to bring understanding of a subject matter that an individual has no concept or no point of reference to connect the dots or to get that you know i understand moment you have to build a foundation so how do you build a foundation in order to build a foundation you have to take something especially when you're dealing with a group of people you have you need to take something that is um universal knowledge so all all of the people in this people group know about this particular subject this particular thing so i'm going to use this particular thing to explain or to create and establish a foundation that i can build upon so in the case with jesus christ and his disciples and you know the jews and whatnot they were agricultural people they were individuals that made their um, livelihood off of knowing how to you know plant seeds when to plant these seeds when the harvest time would come they had to literally know the seasons down to the t they needed to know what needed to be planted at what specific time the amount of light needed sun needed the you know climates they literally ha had to know these things in order to survive in order to eat in order to make to make a living so jesus christ used agricultural terminology to explain the kingdom of god the the mysteries of of the kingdom of, of god so that they can understand it when you see um the account with the the parable of the sower he's using he's using agricultural terminology to express a spiritual truth and so this is why jesus says at the end of these parables the um those who have ears to hear let them hear so foundationally he's speaking using agricultural terminology as a point of reference but those whom god the father who whom, whom they he's prepared to receive his word they're not hearing just you know a seed a dirt they're able to use the agricultural terminology as a point of reference to understand the spiritual truth and it's the same thing with this book so instead of using agricultural terminologies because that's not a common um that's not a common factor with a whole generation because god deals with a, a generation when explaining the kingdom of god and the mysteries of um his kingdom so he knows this all this whole generation we know about technology so when reading this book and i i read it a couple times reading the, reading the book and realizing that with a, a with a solidified and anchored understanding that what god is after is taking an individual changing how we think so that we can receive information from him so that we can receive anything from him direction instructions on a day-to-day -day basis so it would it would just be like if a, a dog and a cat cannot communicate with one another why not communication with especially species types comes down to a nature dogs communicate in a certain way and they can identify how they communicate because it's their way of communication and understanding is down and go down even into their genetic coding and the same with cats a, a, a cat and a dog cannot communicate why they have two separate natures they have two separate desires they have they think in two separate ways so there's going to be that uh, um natural barrier that comes from separate natures and it's the same thing with god and fallen man we have 
in a fallen state, we have two separate natures, two separate desires. We think two separate ways. So if God is speaking, we have no idea what he's saying because we're, we're two different life types. This is why when, um, when we're not saved, we try to read the Bible. It makes absolutely no sense. It's, it looks as if it's contradicting itself or it looks as if God is contradicting itself. It looks absolutely foolish to an individual who has not been born again. And so when that happens and, but you still try to alleviate any guilt, shame, and condemnation that comes from being a sinner you opt to sit in the church knowing that you're not changed knowing that you still have the same appetites and desires but you try to change yourself outwardly to conform to what people call a christian or a good person but inwardly you know who and what you really are and you, and you frustrate yourself you either frustrate yourself and sit there and just and resent um what you're doing but you don't know what else to do you don't know how else to get to god i mean a church building is your extent of god and or you would just resent the fact and be frustrated at the fact that you know you're sitting there trying to be something that you're not and then you would just give up and say well hey i used to be a christian i tried that it's not for me but you never were a christian becoming a christian is not by verbal confession it is by a nature change uh, uh you can train a, a parrot to bark but it doesn't, it doesn't make that parrot a, a, a dog it's still a bird you can be trained to emulate anything but that does not make you the thing a man can walk around with a dress you know get have his penis surgically removed breast implants he can emulate try to emulate a woman but that does not make him a woman god looks at natures it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter what you do outwardly god god knows the nature of a person so god is not god is not giving us his word he's not giving us the bible to emulate a christian he has given his word to change us so that way we can be used by him to do his will to war against the devil, to war against the adversary of mankind, the adversary of, of heaven. Now, um, I want to, I do want to read um, from the book of Acts, chapter eighteen, starting at verse twenty-four, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified version because right now, I mean, I, I'm only, I'm thirty-one. I'll be thirty-two in November. So I'm not sure, you know, how, I mean, I don't even know what to call it. Like, I don't know what was, what church was like, you know, back, back in the day or what people, I don't know what people did back then. I don't know, but I know that where we are right now or where a lot of, a lot of us are right now is not the stopping place it's not what what god is after and there's one thing that i believe god puts down in his people who sincerely seek after his will and it's the not being satisfied with mediocrity, a mediocre, a mediocre Christian life, and I'm I'm speaking from you know my personal, um, my personal belief as far as you know media a mediocre Christian life for me, because I don't want to just I, reading the Book of Acts. It's like how can I how can I believe that going to quote unquote church is the epitome of christian life that doesn't make sense i i mean it doesn't make sense but there's a there's a desire i believe in the heart of god to give more to his church because sinners need more Jesus Christ held nothing back. Jesus Christ didn't say, well, instead of fasting for 40 days, I'm going to do 21. God didn't shortchange us at all in salvation. He gave everything. 
And the more and more, and just being blatantly honest, the more and more I get instruction from God, and the, the more I realize how my life has ended. My, my life has ended and my life is hidden in Christ. And, and my whole um, reason for living is to do the will of God. And the flesh hates that. The flesh knows death is imminent. And the flesh will try to resist what God is saying to do. But it takes it takes um, a resolute mind to, to endure the death needed in order for Christ to live. It's a daily thing. It's not, you know, always peaches and cream. But it's necessary because when you look at people and just like look at them from a standpoint of, of observation and realize when, if these people were to die today they would go to hell and that's not okay it's, it's not okay to like I, obviously I can't control whether somebody go to hell or not I don't care what what people do after I say what I say or do what I do is it's none of my business but if they don't know that's a problem. If they don't know about the real gospel of Jesus Christ and I'm around, it's a problem. So my goal, um, it'll be it'll be um four years since I've came to Saint I mean since I've come to Atlanta in January and just talking to people about the gospel even just doing these podcasts it is not enough for me it's not enough because there's a there's a greater need than just talking to people and i just yeah i just i just know that people need more than what they have now so that requires my complete death and death to self so that Christ can completely do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it and not fantasize about that type of life but actually just yield yielding and not even thinking about it but I'm going to run away from um, the book of Acts chapter 18 I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version and we're going to start off at verse 24 and it reads now a Jew named uh, now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent and cultured man, so he spoke well and he was well versed in in different type of cultures and well versed in the Hebrew scriptures. This man had an instruct this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being spiritually impassioned. He was speaking and teaching accurately the things about Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly and fearlessly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained more accurately to him the way of God and the full story of the life of Christ. So be mindful of that, the full story of the life of Christ. And when Apollos wanted to go across to Achaia, southern Greece, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples, urging them to welcome him gladly. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who, through grace, had believed and had followed Jesus as Lord and Savior. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public discussions, proving by the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. Now, in in the King James Version, in the King James Version, when we read verse 25, in the King James in the King James Version it says that Apollos knew only the baptism of John. So remember the baptism of John was a baptism um unto repentance. 
And we know that when we read further in, in um, chapter 19 of the book of Acts, that Apollo, I'm sorry, that Paul encountered disciples who only who also only knew of the baptism of John. And so, and these people never even knew about the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, you know, Apollo, I mean, not, not Apollos, but Paul, um, he, excuse me, helped them in that manner as far as um, baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I said, like I said, you read that in verse 19, the di looking at the difference between repentance, the baptism of repentance, re receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, being born again. And then that baptism in the Holy Ghost. Every single person needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. When we look at the difference between those in the, the Old Testament and then the difference between those in the New Testament who receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, especially um, at Pentecost, they were given power, dunamis power, to cast out devils. To heal the sick, open blind eyes, and anything else that the Lord, that the, that the Spirit willed to do through them. Now, why is it today that there are so many people around us sick, so many people around us in wheelchairs, so many people around us who have never experienced the power of God? Through us as born again Christians. I don't ask this question to condemn. I, I ask this because. Just like Apollos. We need to be told a more excellent way. Taught a more excellent way. And it's the Holy Ghost. Taking a vessel. That's, that's completely yielded. That has no resistance. Against the will of God. And us doing the works of God. Jesus Christ said that greater works that we should be doing greater works because he's going to the Father. But where where are the greater works though? More is required. More is required. Everything is required. Everything is required. And it starts with the, the reformatting of our minds. What does that mean? If you were to take a, a computer and you know you click on you know, you get an email about, um, you know, UPS is mailing your package. Thank you for paying 200 or some odd dollars for, you know, for this device. If you didn't purchase this device, then click here. Yeah, a lot of you guys may have gotten phishing emails like that. So let's suppose you're on a laptop and you see that email and immediately you say, oh no, they're going to charge my, they, they're going to charge my car for X amount of dollars. And you click on that link. And you realize once you click that link, you just got a virus on your laptop. And immediately something comes up that says, don't shut down your computer, so on and such. And at this point, you begin to see your mouse being controlled. You're not moving around, but you see your mouse being controlled. You see the mouse clicking on things and you have no control over it. Though it's your device, but you're not moving it. With that virus, you have let in a whole nother person. You have to be mindful that when when these particular viruses that control your computer, that control, um, that sit dormant in your computer as apps that do whatever, they don't necessarily have to be controlling your mouse. A virus is sent by a person. These viruses are not just like fictitious random out of the blue occurrences these are created by people they're sent by persons so you see this you know you have this virus on your computer and now everything's running slow on it and so in your mind you say okay hey i need to shut this off I need to take it to a geek squad to have this virus removed. You take the you take your you know your laptop to get to get the virus removed. They go in and do whatever they do, being that they're specialists, and literally they bring it back to you as good as new. Like manufactured reset good as new. You, you all those old programs you had on there that were just sitting there that you weren't using. 
the virus the virus had infected you know files and corrupted things completely removed your device has at this point been optimized all that lag you had even before you know that that big virus that you finally saw wiped out you know the, the specialist tells you hey you had a couple things on your device that was pulling you know that was pulling data you weren't using it's been sitting here it's been running in the background this is why it's been running slow this is why you've been having these issues literally brand new like it was like it was factory refurbished you have a maximized device now when you click on things e you get immediate action you click on apps you get it get it to immediately pop up and you're surprised, like wow it's running like it's brand new that's because you had a system reset your your laptop literally had a system reset your your laptop has been maximized and this is what god does he takes a purse he takes a sinner and please be mindful that he takes a sinner no no one comes to god being not being a sinner he takes a sinner those that want to be born again he saves them so this is that device that has that virus and god being a specialist he takes that that sinner that device that has that virus and he, and he refurbishes it it's a continual process and as a um as a born again christian that refurbishing com comes via deliverance it comes via spending time with god reading the bible studying the bible praying fasting these things are refurbishing your mind <laughs> excuse me it's refurbishing your mind it's refurbishing how you think and little by little your desires begin to change your appetites begin to change all of that hopelessness falls away all that depression and oppression falls away and now you have a, a zeal and a desire to set goals to actually live as opposed to just float through life as a vagabond that because that is this is because god is continuously washing you in his word you're being renewed through the blood of jesus and your identity that's in christ is being realized so now you have eternal life working in you via the holy ghost and all, like i say always be mindful to, to seek the baptism of the holy ghost because now you have a, a resistor against sin you have a resistor against lies and deceptions you have a resistor against satan himself obviously you, your will still comes into place but now the holy ghost undergirds you through those convictions where you used to, you didn't originally be convicted about things and now the holy ghost says no because why because he's changing you as you yield to him and to what god created you to be and then more and more as you're being changed by the holy ghost as you're being changed in your mind and your soul is being cleansed because you're you're reading the bible you're studying the bible you're praying you're fasting and, and you're removing your from yourself from those things that brought in those viruses in the first place your mind is being changed and now you, you begin to think like god what bothers god bothers you what God likes, you like. What God doesn't like, you don't like. Where God wouldn't go, you wouldn't go. And so God is beginning to change how you think. And if you and, and the Lord are beginning to think the same when God is talking, you can understand what he's saying. This is why the, the Bible begins to make sense because now you can think like God thinks. You see things from God's point of view. When God says something, you can understand it now. And the Lord does it bit by bit because the virus has been so deeply rooted through through years of sin. But God takes the time to refurbish you, to change you, to change your appetites. Your mind becomes swifter, sharper. You begin to be able to do things. You be able to you're able to learn things and actually um, retain the retain information because god is beginning to teach you he's, he's reteaching you how to live we don't know how to live satan taught us how to live but through just the process of being changed and god doing that work through us as we yield to him and allow him to change us we become new the bible says that the lord jesus christ says that 
behold, I make all things new. So just like we talked about that that laptop where it had that those viruses, it was lagging. You took it to a specialist and it operates like a brand new device, like a factory reset. The Lord is trying to reset those who have been yielded to him, those who want to be saved, trying to reset us to be able to want to be reconciled to him and to be able to hear him in real time. To receive instructions on what to do day by day. God's desire for us is to be changed in order to hear from him to do his will. So this is what the book God Celestial Network touches on. One, knowing that the mind has to be changed. One, every single person needs to be saved, period. That's 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 a given. But God desires for us to to walk in a more perfect way, in a more excellent way, not just being content with, you know, going somewhere every Sunday and saying, well, I pay my dues. No, God wants to deal with us individually, instruct us individually, use us like chess pieces. God desires to have that that personal of a relationship with us individually. It's, it's absolutely possible. It's There's more to salvation than what we've experienced. If you have any type of desire to really walk in the will of God, you know that the salvation you've experienced thus far is not, is not the end all be all. There's more that God desires to pour into us. There's God desires to use us more, but he can only use us to the extent that we give up every hope, aspiration, desire, everything in his life, and yield it over to the Lord to say, thy will be done, period, thy will be done. And as our minds are being transformed, as our minds are being reformatted to be aligned with God's will, when God tells us to do something, that resistance will be removed. God is looking for instantaneous obedience. Just like when you click a click an app, you want it to instantly open up. You don't want it to spin and for any length of time and then open up. You want immediate um, reaction to to a command you gave. Every button you pl- you press has a code that uh, a command that that device is supposed to perform. So when God gives a command, He's looking for instantaneous obedience with no resistance. So again, um, you guys, if you're interested in attending the God Celestial Network book study, if you have not already purchased the book, you can go to rempublish.com. That's R-E-M-P-U-B-L-I-S-H.com. You can purchase your book there. It's available in paperback audio and audio meaning that the book is read to you um also ebook as well and then you also want to get the god celestial network study guide that goes along with the book it'll have um some questions vocabulary in it as well and for those of you who would like to join the book study um i'll when you email me um if you're interested whether you're going to be in person excuse me whether you're going to be in person or remote you can email me at get understanding LLC, followed by the number seven at gmail.com. And then I will send you a free copy of chapter one of the book, as well as chapter one of the study guide. Risen and alive, it's him we go.